You ready to learn how to add 10 feet to your throw literally in the next hour at worst case in the next week? We're going to talk about how we do it in this video, so check it out. Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Eric Johnson from Meritate Throws Nation. In today's video, we are going to take a look at a thrower and we're going to be looking at more for helping coaches and throwers that are coaching themselves or don't have a coach, how to break down video and understand exactly what you should be looking at and how we create fixes and how we create a fast fix. Everybody's looking for the magic bullet and here's what I'll tell you. There is no magic bullet, but there is a way to fix the throw quick. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a look. Throw on the left, throw on the right. Much, much bigger, bigger difference, much better technique. And I want you to pay close attention as we go back to the start. So let's look at the throw on the left. And let's look at the throw on the right and we're going to break it down and you're going to see what's going on on the left versus what's going on on the right and how are we creating a much better power position, better alignment on the throw and how did we do this in an hour and how can you do the same thing? Okay, so number one, check out our system. Okay, number two, so here's what we did. The key thing that we always teach, you have to understand when we talk about a throwing chain reaction, what do we mean by that? We mean you have to understand that when the first action, the action of physics, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So if I set myself up wrong, then the rest of the dominoes don't fall, i.e. our throw. The throw happens in two seconds. It's unnatural. It's fast. How do you train two seconds? You got to break it down. You have to understand what's happening at each phase of the throw. So the setup is going to set up tension, balance, the radius, right? So if you, the radius is how far the arms are from the body. The orbit is going to be the path of the discus around the body as it goes to the throw. So it's going to look something like this when you throw. Okay. And it should actually look a little wider. We're setting up separations. So that means we have to isolate the hips and we have to twist the shoulders. So isolate, separate the hips, right? Or separate the shoulders. So that's the key. So one of the things that you're gonna notice here is we have a slightly different position of the right hip and we have a slightly different position of the left foot, okay? One of the things we wanna be able to look at is how do we change, we have better tension, we have better separation, and we basically have better balance as a result. So balance is the first thing that you have to set up. And if you're looking to add 10 feet to your throw today, or at least within the next seven days, you are most likely off balance. And if you are off balance, everything you're going to try to do in your training is gonna suffer. You can't dance off balance. You can't walk. If you're off balance, you fall. Everything, you have to be on balance. And so that's why people fall, because they lose their balance. So if you have no balance or you're losing your balance in the throw, like this, so you're gonna see, she starts to fall this way, the upper body opens up, the discus is now gonna catch up to the hip, and so now the upper body's moving ahead, she can't get her lower body ahead effectively, you see how her hips aren't under her, you see how we're getting a very different position over here, where we've got the left leg getting into the power position faster, and we have a better line, look at how far back the discus is now. now is she gonna be working on a lot of other things? Absolutely, but how did we make this improvement from most of her throws looking like this to most of her throws looking like this in an hour? And then how did we train for the next hour where our throws were more on this path where we're gonna be able to now address other things? We fix balance, we fix balance in the, in the direction of the throw, and we do that by covering those things that I just explained. So here's what we're gonna look at it real quick. I'm gonna make myself big so you guys can see me. So you're gonna see as we do this, she went here, okay? And so one, she had her base extra wide. If you're wide, you can have an extra base and that's good, but you're gonna see how I move this way. How I set up, where I set up my wind is the key. So you're gonna notice what she did on the video on the left, you're gonna see her turn her foot too early. Look what that does to my right hip. If I turn this hip too early and you're gonna see her foot more in this position, so now even though it looks like she's wound up, what this is doing, if you look at me from the side, when I do this, you're gonna notice that I'm actually gonna be in a situation where it's gonna make me fall in, which is exactly what we saw on the video on the left. But when we set up like this and we lock, it's gonna allow her to turn and keep herself here and get this sweep ahead of the discus, 
keep the discus further back, and it's gonna now create a position where you can move across the circle. So you'll see the, big, the major difference. Now, when we go here, you're gonna see at the end of the wind, look at the feet. So you can see that the video on the right, she's got, finally she's got tension. She's got tension and she's on balance. So this way, as we begin to go, she's still a little too active because that's been the habit, but you're gonna notice that she's able to get the sweep leg more active. See how this, this is what I call the dragging sweep, and you'll see how this discus is now in front of the hip, and now we've got that discus behind the hip, we've got the sweep leg moving ahead, we can even see her arm here, that's something she actually was already doing fairly well, but now you're gonna see how her hips are twisting under her, and they're staying closer to under the shoulders. Your, sh your hips and shoulders have to stay like this when you throw. Now, we can't get into any of these positions if we are focusing, if we just say try to keep your hips under your shoulders, yes, but we have to be on balance out of the back of the circle to create that linear path that was just discussed. So what we're gonna look at is what are the exact coaching cues, what is the sequence? So one of the things that we teach is we break down the start of the throw into what we call our, a six position sequence. When we talk to you about the throwing chain reaction, again, that's the physics. The six pillars are the mechanical parts. So the first thing you learn when we teach the throwing chain reaction system, the six pillars, and then we teach you the chain reaction. But you might say, well, why is the system called throwing chain reaction? Instead of why isn't it called just six pillar throwing system? Because the chain reaction is what sets up the mechanics. And the point I'm making here is that what she did is we changed this, the six position sequence and we made one little change here versus here. Look at the difference. Look at the difference in the feet. We've got almost the same position. So if you prematurely turn the lower body, any part of it, while you're trying to create separation, it's like taking a slingshot, holding the handle and pulling it like this. This is the analogy I use all the time when I'm coaching. If I take it and I do this and I go, hey, why doesn't the slingshot work? Because you have to hold that handle still and stretch and pull back the the sling okay so when you get to a position where you are doing this and you're getting yourself here and you don't isolate and separate and then turn do you see the difference in my position this is what more of what she did on the video on the right when we did this in the video on the left, she did this. Do you see the difference of turning this at the same time? So now this moves. So you're not moving, holding the slingshot handle and pulling back the sling, you're moving it together. So when this moves and winds with the discus, do you see how my right hip is moving? So now she's wide, her hips are here. So then when you go on, what happens? You're falling back. And what do you do when you fall? You have to turn your chest to try to catch your balance which means you're now taking the sling tension and you're losing it. What do we want to focus on? We focus on this. So now I'm going to show you this. So if coaches, if you're doing this, athletes, what are you going to be doing? This little bad boy, you're going to be filming yourself all the time. And it's a great tool. Trust me, back in the day, it was old school and you had to wait and you had a, it was like, phone is amazing. You can get a tripod for 30 bucks and you can film yourself, but you got to know what you're looking for. And if you, Watch this, and most of you guys, when you started this, you couldn't really tell what was different. Now, hopefully, you can tell the difference. So now, let's look at this. You see the difference in the feet? We've created better tension. Yes, she has the discus a little further back here, but not because she's created more torque. She's moved her lower body with her upper body. We don't have the, the isolated hips and the separated shoulders. So one of the things we teach in our system, like I said, is a six-position sequence to break all this down and we show you how this works. So we would swing the discus. So this is, the, this is actually the beginning of the third phase of what we showed, okay? So now we're here, and this would be the fourth position, this would be the fifth position, and the sixth position. The reason we break down a sequence into parts is so that you know how to actually identify what's wrong. So when you learn this, and here's what I'm showing you. This is the position four, five, six. Right here is where she got in the biggest trouble. So watch right here, watch your foot. Here her foot's already moving, here her foot stays locked. This is gonna allow the shoulders 
Let me redo that. This is going to allow the shoulders to twist on top of the hips, and this is going to help keep the, the hips more isolated. So watch as we keep going. You see how our foot's moving? Foot's moving, foot's moving, foot's moving. Foot's hardly moved here. This locks, isolates the hips, and allows the separation. Now what's happening is we're creating a stretch reflex, which is, if you've ever seen me do this example, hold your hand on your chest, go fast finger, or take your other hand, peel it up and snap it down, and this is stretch reflex, and this is gonna make the implement go way further, way easier. So, we are learning how to create separation, and when we do that, by moving this, you are now messing up balance. So, if you don't know how to set up the radius and the orbit separation and stretch reflex, which then allows you to set up a more optimal entry hinge, this position of the knee and foot, is going to be able to turn and then drop into the throw. So that's what we call pillar two, pillar three. When we turn in the air, pillar four, landing in the power position, pillar five, pillar six. Now we have drills for every pillar. We teach everything, but here's the point of this video. How are you gonna improve in the next hour? You have to change your wind up and that's gonna change the tension and that's gonna change the balance. And just what I showed you right here, this one simple tip of, are you turning this foot too early while you're winding the discus? So we see this all the time, athletes turning the discus, and there's this is what I call, it's arbitrary. You're just turning it to turn it. You're not turning it with function. So you isolate the feet, knees, hips, like I demonstrated earlier, separate the shoulders. Now when I get to the point of, I'm gonna wind further, the foot naturally kind of moves into the right position and you're setting what we call as the entry hinge. And now you have actually set up a chain reaction and now your balance will be better, your linear path will be better and you will be better. So whether it's the off season, pre season or in season, this is the first thing because if you don't fix this, you are gonna constantly beat your brains out. You're gonna work on your sweep and you're gonna work on your power position. You're gonna work on all these things. You're gonna work on trying to keep your upper body back. Well, guess what? If you're constantly falling into the throw, here's what happens. So here's what happens at first when we did the, the assessment. Okay, let me see what you do. And then she goes and it's like, okay, she's opening her upper body way up. Why? Well, look at her, she's falling this way. And then, you know, she's coming this way and then she falls off and you see how her upper body is basically turned in this direction. She doesn't have any right leg. She's managed to turn. And then here we see her coming through this way. Look at her come around. Look at the linear path. See how she's moving more linear? She's still a little off, but way better than this. And now you can see how she's got the shoulders back, the block arm starting to stop, which is what we want. We're turning through. Now, we still got to learn how to turn this hip, and then we're going to still be working on these things, but we got way better stretch, a bigger throw, a better path of the implement where it flies, and how did all that change? Did we work on the finish? Did we work on the sweep? Did we work on the middle? No, we worked on setting up balance, separation, stretch, reflex, and the entry hinge, the six objectives that you need to understand on how you set up your throw. If you want to learn more exactly about more cues, the exact six position sequence, and we have a simplified version, which is a three position sequence. Be sure to check the links below to check out various resources, everything we have from camps, coaching services, joining our newsletter where we give you the behind the scenes information in more detail that was the inspiration for this video. Check it out, join the newsletter, and we'll see you on the next video.